Ten seconds. Uh, good morning, everyone. John Connolly, President of the Twin Cities North Chamber of Commerce. Hey, thanks for joining us here at the Roseville Business Council. First of all, a shout out to the Ayers Engineering Team for uh, their uh, treat of donuts and Dunkin' Coffee. Thank you so much, uh, Jose, and your team for, uh, you know, bringing hospitality to the Roseville Business Council. Appreciate it. And to our host here, uh, the City of Roseville, thanks so much for opening up uh, your City Council Chamber for the Roseville Business Council. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to thank uh, the other sponsors here, uh, Highway Credit Union, McGough, and Visit Roseville. Because of their support, we can continue to share uh, the important programming and meeting uh, the uh, expectations of the businesses to stay informed about what's going on here in Roseville. And uh, we just like to keep connected, and it's our way of keeping connected on a monthly basis. So now I want to uh, officially start the meeting by going around the room and have everyone introduce themselves and uh, here in the council chambers. Please share your name and the organization you're affiliated with. And uh, with that, let's start with you. Hi everybody, Josue Gonzalez, I'm with Ayers Associates. And thanks again. Yep, you're welcome. Uh -huh. I'm Deb Nygaard, I'm with Arthur Senior Care. Good morning, I'm Matthew Weiland, I'm with Clear Channel Outdoor. Good morning, Matthew Johnson, uh, Roseville Parks and Recreation. Good morning, I'm Matthew Clydesdale. This is the man. <laughs> the man <in> row. <laughs> we find each other. Yeah, uh, we find each other. Yeah, uh, got the McGuire, in that room. Yeah. McGuire Insurance Agency. Uh, Pat Trudgeon, City Manager for Roseville. Morning, I'm Dan Rowe, the Mayor of Roseville. Morning, Kate Dewin, Commissioner, Mary Jo McGuire's office at Ramsey County. Jim Anderson, I'm just a resident. Good morning, I am Gina and I am representing Namaste Browse and Boutique. Jack Livingston, business banker, Royal Credit Union and ambassador for Twin Cities North Chamber. Yes. Margarita Jules, First Bank and Trust. Melissa Fournier, I'm with Visit Roseville. Glenn Matthews from Oxygen Service Company. Jeannie Kelsey, City of Roseville Housing and Economic Development Program Manager. Okay, thanks everyone for joining us and those online that are going to join us too as well. And now I'd like to introduce uh, Jesse Freihammer, the Public Works Director for the City of Roseville. Uh, after receiving his degree in civil engineering from North Dakota State University, Jesse joined the City of Roseville staff in, in 2015 and is now serving as Chief City Engineer and Assistant Public Works Director. He was promoted to Public Works Director in November of 19, or excuse me, 2022, 19, whoop, uh, 2022. Jesse is going to help us understand what's happening in Roseville as far as construction coming up this season. Jesse, thanks. Yeah, thank you, John. Um, thank you, everyone. Um, I'm going to give a quick overview of what Roseville plans to do this year for our construction projects. Um, we also, no one from the county could be here, so we'll kind of go through some county projects that'll be going on, and then uh, I'll turn it over to MnDOT, and they will go through a couple larger projects that'll be going on here. Um, so this map uh, kind of shows what is all going to be happening here in Roseville. So this includes um, both the, the county projects and MnDOT projects. Uh, for the most part, Roseville's projects, uh, we're just doing a lot of little local streets, mill and overlay type projects. Um, those are all the streets in red, so pretty minimally impactful to the businesses. Uh, most of these are in residential areas, so it should be real minimal impacts. Uh, we do have a couple pathway projects we'll be doing. Um, these will be a little more impactful, although should, they should be pretty minor with just some lane shifts as the, the whole road shouldn't be closed down. Uh, one of those is actually out on Cleveland Avenue, just north of Iona, north of the uh, um, uh, uh, the bus tr uh, rep or the bus uh, transfer over there. So just north of Iona connected up to where CPC is. They, they built a sidewalk a few years ago, so we're completing a gap there. Uh, the other one is on Lexington Avenue uh, across from the high school, across from the tennis court. So we'll be completing a, a 
a segment between Trunk Highway 36 up to County Road B2. Uh, and then the other one is in a more residential area is off of uh, Marion Street from Larpenter up to uh, the end of that cul-de-sac. Um, we are doing a couple other utility projects, some lift station work, uh, but those should have minimal impacts. And then we are also do painting the inside of the water tower. Uh, so it shouldn't be very visible, but uh, hopefully no impacts to anyone on those projects. Uh, the other project Rose was looking into is we are studying the intersection of um, Snelling Avenue and County Road B for some pedestrian improvements. Uh, there's a lot of pedestrian activity there with the mall uh, and the multifamily residential, as well as the, the bus rapid transit line. So we're looking into that, hoping to have that study wrapped up by the end of the year. Um, and that will actually be in conjunction with the project that uh, MnDOT will talk about here shortly. So that's kind of it for Roseville projects. Um, so Ramsey County actually has a lot going on. Most of it is actually kind of future work, but um, you know, county just included this in their slides. You know, they, they, they do maintain uh, about 293 miles of roads, um, varying, varying amounts of traffic on their roads. Um, they are starting to add a lot of more sidewalks and trails on their system, um, including some bike lanes. And then obviously they maintain a lot of the signal systems uh, in, in the area. So their, their current TIP has not, or transportation improvement plan has not been adopted yet. That will be done in early April, uh, but the, the project list are, are pretty much locked in place, but it hasn't been formally approved by the board. Um, so one update they do have, I know a few businesses and a few residents here uh, probably impacted by the project last year. So Lexington Avenue, this is more in Shoreview, Arden Hills, but that project was a carryover from last year. They do anticipate that to begin here uh, in late April um, and hope to have it completed by early August. Um, they do, will have some phasing, we'll be back to one lane for a good chunk of that. Um, and it sounds like there will be one week where they have some work at the railroad where they'll actually have to detour traffic once again. Um, otherwise, the other project actually, Roseville Council just um, uh, took some action on this on, on Monday night was a Victoria Street corridor study. This was completed last year, but looking to add a pathway on the west side of Victoria Street from County Road C um, up towards Harriet to, to complete a, a, a gap there. Um, basically applying for grant funding, but that would be a, a future project, uh, likely in either 28 or 29 if funding is secured. Um, Another big project, this was actually scheduled for um, this year, but it did, it did get delayed by the county, is County Road B between Snelling and Lexington Avenue uh, over by uh, Harmar Target area. Um, like I said, this was supposed to be done this year. Uh, it was delayed, but this will be a, a reconstruction of the concrete. They'll be replacing that with bituminous pavement. Uh, the city will be replacing a lot of water main as part of that project. Um, there will be construction impacts. They do anticipate keeping the road open uh, to businesses, but traffic will most likely be down, down to one lane uh, for the duration of that project. So more to come on that. They, they do plan to do another uh, engagement uh, probably this time or maybe a little bit earlier next year once we get a contractor on board. Uh, and that'll most likely take the length of the summer, but we, we do anticipate getting that project wrapped up in one construction season. Uh, the other project that is ongoing for studying, but will also be a 2024 project, is Dale Street uh, from Como Avenue to, to, to Highway 36. So the county is looking to convert that roadway from a four-lane roadway to a three-lane. They'll do that in conjunction with a mill and overlay. Um, and then they'll be replacing traffic signals as part of that project at uh, Larpenter County Road B. Um, then the other project, uh, continuation, um, I know the county is doing work on Rice Street south of Wheelock, but uh, coming into Roseville, they will be begin that process late this year, early 2024, from Rice Street, from Wheelock up to County Road B. Um, this will also be in conjunction with the G-Line design that Metro Transit will be doing. Um, and a lot of this will be tying off of the uh, Rice Street visioning plan uh, currently underway. Um, but yeah, so this will be a big project and a lot more to come with a lot more engagement with the community in the next uh, couple of years. And then just to, to highlight, um, you know, like I said, the County Road D, pro or, uh, the Dale Street project is part of this four to three lane study, but there will be uh, a couple other projects potentially in Roseville in the, in the upcoming years. County Road C, the county's looking at, um, Fairview Avenue between B2 and C2 and uh, County Road B2. County Road B2 between Long Lake Road and Fairview. So the county is still looking at a few of these safety upgrades uh, going on, ongoing into the future. 
Um, and then the other big project the county did want to highlight is they are going through a Ramsey County 2050 All Abilities Plan. Um, they just started this. They've had a couple engagements with the community, but certainly uh, looking for feedback from the public um, on, on that, that project to help establish their priorities uh, going forward. So if you guys have any questions on that, uh, certainly Brian Isaacson, the Public Works Director for Ramsey County. Otherwise, I know John Mazzatello, he's their uh, uh, Deputy Director of Program Delivery. He could uh, certainly, if you have more specific questions, reach out to those folks and uh, they can try to provide you some more info. So otherwise, with that, um, I'll introduce uh, Kent Bernard. He's the communication specialist working for the Minnesota Department of Transportation in the Metro District. Uh, in that role, he's handled communication for numerous projects in the Twin Cities Metro area. He currently works on projects in Ramsey County and Anoka County, uh, including upcoming construction projects on Trunk Highway 36 here in Roseville this year. So with that, I'll turn it over to Kent. Thank you very much, and I'd like to thank John, too, for letting us come here. I actually was hoping that a project uh, engineer that is working on our Highway 36 Fairview Avenue project would be here, but instead you're stuck with me. Make sure I know how to advance the slides here. should just be able to use the arrow. Mm -hmm. Is it this one here? No, it's the push oh, okay. Okay. Um, the green on this slide shows the entire area that's going to be affected by the Highway 36 Fairview Avenue project. Uh, we're looking at getting started on that probably sometime in early June. And uh, actually, the uh, we're going to have some retaining wall connected in here, and uh, that's kind of on this on this particular slide, and also a sidewalk on the east side of Fairview Avenue. This slide shows the two right turn lanes that are going to be constructed for movement onto northbound Fairview Avenue to the mall and to the business district north of the mall. Got several things we're going to be doing on this project, including new pavement, obviously, uh, at the uh, at the uh, mall, and the ramps are going to be rebuilt. We're also got we've also got drainage out there. We're going to be putting in a sidewalk, and we're also going to be putting new pavement on the ramps to and from. Highway 36, and then new signals and signal configurations for the construction area and the intersections within that project area. And for all intents and purposes, the construction area is basically County Road B up to County Road B2. Um, some of the things we're going to be doing, we're going to have a 30-day closure on the ramps from Highway 36 eastbound and westbound. There will be a signed detour for that. The signal replacement and revisions at the four intersections within the project area. Uh, we're going to have periodic single lane traffic between County Road B2 and County Road B on the project. There will be one full weekend closure of Fairview Avenue. There will be a closure and a detour for that. And that'll be in that same area of County Road B to County Road B2. And then our traffic impacts. Um, we're probably going to start at late April, early May, somewhere in there. And we're going to be going through August 21st, for 24th, excuse me. And the big important part of that is we are going to be out of here and done with the work before the state fair. And that has been promised. Not by me, by the project engineer. <laughs> Make that clear. Uh, also, we're going to be improving the ramp access to Fairview Avenue for local businesses in, in that area for, for traffic. Uh, the improved traffic signals, we're going to be putting in some ADA improvements there, which would be pedestrian um, APS, which is the audible pedestrian signals there. And we're going to be putting in what's called a truncated dome, which are the small dots that let people know that they're approaching a uh, crossing. Um, we're also going to be improving the drainage there. And if you've ever been out on Fairview Avenue when it rains, uh, a few years ago, my mother-in-law and my wife and I went and we had cars actually stalled underneath Highway 36 at Fairview because it rained that much. So hopefully this project will totally take care of that issue for us. We won't have cars sitting out there in the water anymore. Uh, we're also going to be improving pedestrian access with our new trails out here. And uh, estimated cost for this project, about $4 million. So it's uh, fairly substantial for us. 
Um, this shows the ramps that we're going to be working on. Um, unfortunately, engineers tend to look at these types of maps and they don't turn them the same way I would do it because north is actually this way on the map. But this is the, the ramps and the loops at Fairview and Highway 36 that we're going to be working on. And here's the West Mall entrance. Uh, Rosedale is right here. We're going to be working on the mall entrance and we're going to be improving that to get traffic in and out of the mall better. And this is the marketplace. I, I wish they were oriented the other way around because it would make things easier to explain. But marketplace is on the west side of Fairview Avenue. We're going to be doing some work there at the entrance. And then we're also going to be working on the service road, which leads over to Applebee's and some of the restaurants over there. And here we're going to have the weekend closure. This shows basically where we're going to be closing from County Road B up to County Road B2. And then we're going to have to close the uh, loops there at the interchange. Another project that we just had our construction conference for was the work at Highway 36 and Hamlin Avenue. And that's going to be starting here probably the end of April, the first part of May. We're going to be out there replacing the signal system at Hamlin, just north of Highway 36, right by Cedar Home Golf Course. Uh, Cedar Home will remain open, so if any of you go and golf there, you'll still be able to go out and uh, swing the clubs this spring and summer. This is going to be a fairly short project. Um, part of the problem at this particular interchange is the signals have gotten old and they don't meet our current standards for design, so we have to replace them. There again, we're going to be doing Americans with Disabilities updates at that particular interchange. And uh, we're also going to be doing a little bit of drainage work here and uh, working on some sidewalks in the area. And this should be done probably sometime July. <clears throat> Excuse me. The other big project that we're going to be doing, and this is next year, but I wanted to bring this to people's attention, we're going to be working on Highway 36 between 35W and Edgerton Street. It's going to be a resurfacing project but we're also going to be building a new lane to carry traffic from southbound Interstate 35W to eastbound Highway 36. Um, there's going to be lane closures out here. We're going to have some ramp closures on this project, and it's going to go the better part of a construction season. We're looking at probably starting sometime around April of 2024 and be done probably by October of 2024. Then another thing was we are looking forward at the future of Highway 36 through this area. So we have a study that's underway. Uh, we do have a web page for that, and I can share that uh, later on with people if they want. But we're looking to see what we need to do to improve Highway 36 to handle future traffic in this area. Real important, uh, we try to communicate all this information to people. My name and number is up there and my email address, but we do have our website up there. And the Highway 36 Roseville website is the one that deals with the Fairview Avenue project. So if you have any questions about that, that's the best place to look for it. I'd also encourage you to sign up for our email updates. We will be sending those out at a regular basis for people when we're doing closures and other work out there that's gonna affect traffic. So that is basically what I've got. Okay, now we're live. Uh, can, could we just advance that one slide again oh, uh, for the resources? Because that is such an important slide for all the businesses to be aware of and uh, to get those email updates too as there well, we opt in for those. Because that is going to be a fantastic resource for every business that's going to be impacted along that corridor. Uh, you know, every business is, uh, is around Rosedale or on uh, whether it's the east or west side, north, south, it's going to be it's going to be impacting everyone around there. So. Uh, Will it have detour routes, Ken? Absolutely. Okay, so it'll probably hit Cleveland or Snelling or uh, well, any of those. W. Yeah, because those both those ramps will be open. Yep. All right, good, good. Uh, just to, uh, before we get into audience questions, uh, gentlemen, and if you could both come up here and just uh, you know handle those, uh, Jesse, why 
why would uh, you know the county uh, in your presentation about it? Why would they go from four lanes to three lanes of traffic? Uh, what's the rationale behind that? Could you help us uh, understand that? Sure. So um, the county's been doing a lot of studying, and they've actually done a couple of these four to three lane conversions. So the the biggest thing is safety. They found. Uh, the crash rate can really go down. And in a lot of cases, the, the delay actually doesn't really go up too much. Um, I know they did it on Larpenter a few years ago. They, when, once they got the signal stuff figured out, that's been a, a good improvement. Uh, but, but the number one thing is safety, um, both for cars and for pedestrians. Instead of crossing four, four lanes of traffic, you only have to cross three as a pedestrian. And then it also gives a lot of opportunity to put like a mid-block crossing, so you only have to cross one lane at a time. Um, so particular in a lot of areas where there's more residential traffic. So, um, but yeah, the county's so a big priority for the county, um, and and certainly we've seen some benefits on on Larpenter when that was done a few years ago, and would anticipate the same in, on on Dale Street here in the future. Okay, thanks for helping us understand that. And then uh, Kent, uh, just to, once again, uh, there's going to be a, a communication plan. I understand for Fairview going out, not only website but also, like you said, email communications. Yep. What can people expect uh, to receive when they get those emails? What kind of things? Our email updates generally just talk about what's coming up in the next week or two weeks, and we'll put in information about what is going to be closed and how you can get around it with the detour routes. And obviously, County Road B2 will be used, Snelling will be used, and 35W. Right, because uh, you know, for, for some businesses, they're not on a schedule, but other businesses, like uh, anything, uh, medical procedures or appointments and services and things like that, they're scheduled. So uh, it's just going to be helpful for any business to know that it might take an extra five minutes for folks to get to you uh, and, uh, and understand those detour routes uh, if uh, they're impacted by the uh, construction uh, this summer. And hopefully it will be ready for the State Fair. I'm going to promise it will be. <laughs> Excellent. All right. And now I'd like to open it up to uh, our guests uh, here in the audience. Uh, I've got uh, the microphone, so please let, raise your hand if you'd like to ask a question of the Jesse or uh, Ken. John, before you, before you start, I also want to loop in online attendees if they have a question that they want to ask. Oh, thank you, Joel. Yes. The raise hand feature, and we can bring them in. As right. For those that are joining us online, if you could do the raise hand feature, uh, Joel, uh, from the city of Roseville is going to manage that, and so we will get your question, uh, you know, available. Okay, go ahead, Deb. Jesse, I, I just have a county question. Could you review Rice Street again? I couldn't keep up. Was the the three lane a study, or is that going to happen? So, uh, so right, Rice Street is a multi year project. Um, so, I can't remember. I I wish I'd have grabbed all my notes on Rice Street. Um, they. So Rice Street south of Wheelock is already under design, um, and it, I, the cross section looks more similar to this. It might look a little different, um, but so they are the county is already committed to convert Rice Street south of Wheelock to a three lane section. Now, once you get into Roseville and Larpenter, it's already a three lane section, so they'll most likely just continue that. Um, the big thing on Rice Street, and then that that design will start in 23 or 20, late this year, early next year. Uh, the, the construction of Rice Street north of Wheelock will actually be a 26 or a 27 construction, so the construction's out there a few years. The other big coordination item on that project is related to the G line, um, similar to the A line bus rapid transit. So that'll that's going to be it goes all the way down into West St. Paul, and it'll go all the way up. Uh, it, it gets extended all the way up to near County Road C2 uh, in Little Canada at the Marketplace uh, Transit Center. So it'll, that'll be a lot, a lot longer ongoing project. Great. Uh, one other question from the, uh, the uh, guest audience. Otherwise, we'll go. Mayor Rowe. Not so much a question, but a testimonial to the emails you can get uh, from MnDOT on the project. I did that for the Unweave the Weave project a number of years ago uh, because that's a part of my commute to, to work each day, and it was very helpful to know what was coming. It didn't make you feel better about being stuck in it sometimes, but it was very helpful to anticipate what was happening. So I would definitely encourage those emails. Thank you. And as a footnote, too, as well, uh, the Twin Cities North Chamber is going to be doing some outreach uh, prior to the construction here uh, in late April. Uh, we'll do some canvassing of the businesses in that area, just making sure that they know that that resource is available, the website and the emails, uh, updates, so that they can manage their uh, you know, business better. Joel, do we have some online folks? Uh, not yet. Not yet? Okay. Yeah. All right. Other questions from the audience? Anything else? I actually had one. We do. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Kent, you said something about uh, traffic from 30... 
A traffic from uh, 35W to 36 eastbound? Yes. Is that correct? Yes. So what form is that going to take? Zach? We're building an auxiliary lane to carry that extra traffic in there. There's a lot of big plans for Highway 36 in the next 5, 10 years out there. I mean, that's the traffic is growing out there, and we're seeing congestion on the roadway. And uh, I don't know if people remember when we rebuilt the Highway 36 bridge over Lexington Avenue, we built it wider. So you may see an extra lane popping up there in the next 10 years. Great. And just to emphasize, uh, it was just three years ago, Kent, when uh, you and I put together the plan for I-35W, uh, when that was under construction, and we uh, let all those businesses know along that corridor. And it worked pretty well, and those businesses were very appreciative of yeah. having that resource available. So I encourage all the businesses to take advantage of that, uh, those resources, to help you manage uh, your business uh, and, and some of the highs and lows that are going to come. It is going to be a short term, fortunately. We, we expect it to be short term, but uh, still going to be uh, you know, impacting uh, a 60 to 70 day window, we think. Absolutely. So, uh, any other last questions? If not, Kent, Jesse, thanks so much. Any closing thoughts you'd like to share with everyone? I'm good. You're good? Okay, you're dismissed then. <laughs> um, I always like to give uh, Mayor Rowe an opportunity to say anything. Uh, Mayor, anything uh, in particular? Nope. Nope, nope, nothing else. Okay, I'm going to turn the mic off then. And now uh, I'd like to uh, just uh, thank, uh, again, the following folks for uh, supporting uh, the Roseville Business Council. First of all, thank you, Ayers, Ayers Engineering, for providing our uh, coffee and donuts this morning. Thank you for providing the sugar and caffeine to keep us fueled up for the meeting. Uh, also, I just want to thank uh, our sponsors again, Highway Credit Union, McGough Construction, and Visit Roseville for their support of our uh, you know, communities and our programs. Uh, on a note, we want you to join us on April 26th. That's our next Roseville Business Council where Kim O'Brien will present on the Rice and Larvener Alliance. And you can join us in person here in the council chambers or online. Uh, registration is open and so it can be accessed on the websites of Twin Cities North at TwinCitiesNorth.org, uh, St. Paul Area Chamber or, uh, you know, Grow Roseville uh, has that resource too is available. One final note I want to mention is uh, there is a collaborative event uh, with the City of Roseville and uh, Ramsey County, uh, a, a resource fair on the, four, the 13th, I believe, of uh, 14th, excuse me, the 14th of uh, April, and that is over at the John Rose Oval, and that is a resource fair for employers uh, to come check out. It's one of those reverse trade shows that uh, there's all sorts of resources for businesses to tap into if they're looking for workforce, and so I urge you to Investigate more if that's an opportunity that you want to take advantage of. There's a link on our website as well as the City of Roseville and Ramsey County Means Business. And now, uh, I'd just like to conclude and say thanks again for uh, the City of Roseville for hosting us today. And for all those that are joining us virtually online, have a wonderful day. And those in person, have a wonderful day. We have coffee and donuts to share. Uh, and, uh, you know, we appreciate the opportunity to hear from Jesse and uh, Kent about the public works uh, going on here in the upcoming session and road construction, but also in the future. Thanks, everyone.